Hey guys, I'm Nick and in today's tutorial we will be creating RBD ways spawning and destruction setup. We will need to create a few procedural ways that you can learn from my previous quick little procedural modeling intro. Link will be in the description and also it should appear in the right top corner right now. So watch that first. Or if you want to just look at the concept of RBD spawning, let's move forward. Again, huge thanks to David Tevin, Steven van der Linden, Rhino Eckstein, Tan G, Antonin Gabold, Lucas Strachan, Nick Davis, Quirin Morhagen, Louis Bigro, Andrew Henrik, Artman 3D, Cody Cho, Peter Silent, and MG for supporting me on Patreon. If you also want to watch twice as many tutorials and receive free project files and huge discounts on all of my Gumroad and most important join our Discord community where I'm doing live streams, artwork, critiques and much more cool stuff. Feel free to check out the Patreon link in the description. Your support will be greatly appreciated. So here we are in Houdini. I'm rendering this in Redshift inside Houdini, not exporting that to Cinema 4D and all of this stuff. So basically, yeah, we start with a, with a few ways setups that we need to create so here are the five different ways and let's begin setting up our rbd simulation so it's pretty easy as you can see here so few key parts first of all we need to find a way how to spawn our ways so i have done also this geo node here geo node yeah geo node i think it's signed to learn blender but yeah, this, this node here, where I just uh, object merged and assigned materials to all of these ways, and then I merged them here and added a null, which is called ways. After that, I created another geo and called it drop. So here we object merge all of our ways, and then we drop a connectivity node, attributes set to class. Then we add an add node, and here we click on this little plus or actually no and this checkbox to uh, spawn uh, one little point here and then we can drop an attribute from pieces and wire our add to the left input and our connectivity to the right input piece attribute here should be set to class and mode should be set to random for the pieces i enable shuffle pieces and set the seed and offset to dollar f now we wire our attribute from pieces to copy two points, it goes to the right input and our connectivity goes to the left input. And now if we select piece attribute and set it to class and also check pack an instance, let's visualize copy two points and now you can see that every frame one random ways is spawned. Now I wanna align them and move up so i'm resetting the pivot point of the ways and then i'm transforming it to go up here you can see that i have moved it up by 6.8 in y axis so it should be like like this and for the rotation i actually use an expression of pit 01 which basically picks a random number each frame and remaps it to be from minus 80 to 80 degrees and it means that we rotate it every frame to a random degree from minus 80 to 80. For the actual RBD, so here in the RBD build solver there is an option to emit RBDs but we don't want to emit them every frame because then they will collide with each other but the cool thing is I've seen this uh, done by Entagma but I'm using this kind of in another way um, so what we can do is before RBD setup we can add a switch if and plug a null and our ways and here you can see this expression and what it does it basically means that I want to pick this transform which is the second input every time the division of the frame number like frame number divided by 20 is divided to the regular number so basically it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 and so on. And also in this uh, double ampersand like shift 7, um, it's logical end and it's used in programming to determine a connection between two of the Boolean operations. So this should be true and this should be true. So basically this will be 
grabbing the transform while it's frame 20, 40, 60, 80, etc. And frame number is less than 200. 50. So let me show you. If we go and switch F, you can see that at the frame 20 we see the ways, and the frame 40, and the frame 60, and the frame 80, and so on. And after the frame 250, we don't see any ways. And that's because if this expression here is not true, we are grabbing this null. So that's how we can control the time and frequency of spawning our RVDs. Because if I set it here to be something like 30, it will be 30, 60, 90, 120 and so on. Then we drop an RBD material fracture and here you can play with these settings a lot and grab really cool looking results. So just a general good practice here when we are spawning RBDs we want to fracture them differently each time. So fracture seed and scatter seed and primary fracture is set to $F so it changes every frame. And I'm using just five scatter points uh, on the primary fracture and for the secondary fracture I'm using 10 um, scattered points. I'm using chipping a bit, I think I don't use detail and for the constraints I'm not using any glue. So primary strength, level multiplier, everything is set to zero. Now let's set up a collider. For me it's this cube with a few protruding cubes. So it's basically a box with a transform, two boxes merged and then add a boolean. But because we are inside of this box it's crucial to add a reverse node here. For the RBD bullet solver, uh, substep set to 60, emit RBDs is checked, collisions, collision padding set to 0.01. Also I added a ground, ground plane here and for the forces I added drag and drag spin. I think these values are default or actually yeah I just I just removed one zero um, here in the air resistance. So then you can cash it out and it should look something like this. So that should be it. and actually you can just like add an ROP Alembic and export that if you want to do that in Cinema 4D. But today we are doing this here in Houdini using Redshift. So what we can do is add a backplate sort of which is just a grid, bend and transform. Super easy. And then we have two lights. Uh, one is our top light and the second one is from this right side. For the vases it might be better to use some sort of an HDRI or maybe move this light a bit here. But I really like this very, very simple and like directional light from, from this side. For the materials and this one will be huge as you can see. For the backplate is just very rough light gray color. Nothing fancy. And here let me show you how you set up the materials in Redshift. And I'm a beginner in this so don't judge me if I'm doing something wrong. But anyways, yeah. So what's here? Uh, we drop a Redshift material and then we drop an RS material. One is kind of like a setup and the second one is kind of like an output. So then here you can see that I have a ramp and what I'm doing here is mixing texture and color. And this creates this rim, like the top part of the ways without any sort of paint. I also using roughness map and bump map or normal map actually. And the cool thing I haven't knew about is you should for the roughness and normal map, you should change the color space to raw. And here in the bump map, input map type should be object space normal. This will give you something like this. Let me enable. I also choose sort of a neutral colors and yeah, that's that's basically it. Now there are a few things that really kind of like sell this this artwork. So let me go to the Redshift properties. It's here in out Redshift ROP. I'm also rendering frames from 15 to 350 just because first 15 frames there is nothing because we spawn our first ways at the frame 20. So what's cool here in Redshift, I'm using minimum sample 64, max samples 1024. I'm using overrides for the refraction and the light. And 
really what what's what's what sells this artwork for me is the motion blur so very important thing is to check this deformation blur and also when you go to our objects here you will see our properties and here in the redshift object settings render mesh deformations blur from velocity attribute this should be checked this uses the velocity to calculate the motion blur if we go back to the redshift properties um global illumination set to 8 and 16 boss modes are brute force caustics are disabled so yep i think that's all so this is how we can set up rbd emission in houdini and render it out with redshift i really hope this tutorial was useful and you have learned some new cool tricks again thanks so much for watching and quick reminder that my patrons get twice as many tutorials so you might want to check out that link in the description i'll be back very soon bye